victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we certainly thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord. We thank you for the protection that you have given us this season, Father God. Lord, we, sp we pray specifically for those who may have been affected by this pandemic in any way, shape, or form, Father God, that you be with them, that you comfort them, that you heal them, Lord, and that you be a provider for them where they need it, Father God. Lord, we ask that you bless this uh, Bible study, Lord, that as those that listen to us tonight, Lord, be just a little more closer in walking with you, Father God. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Our scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen, amen. We're so glad that you've joined us here uh, this Wednesday evening uh, for our Bible study. And before I, we get into our Bible study, I do want to make a couple of administrative announcements just to make sure that we are uh, all tracking and taking care of each other. <clears throat> I've asked our deacons over uh, many times, and they're doing that, to call each one of you. And not only have I <clears throat> asked the deacons to call you, but I'm asking each one of us to call each other. Call and check on your uh, fellow members. If God lays it in your heart, call somebody. And listen, it does not matter if somebody gets two or three calls. That's quite all right. We want folk to know that we care. We want, we want each other to know that we care. So please give each other a call and check on one another. And then I want to uh, tell you again, I want to emphasize the fact that while our doors are closed and we're not having regular church services, our church is open for kingdom business. We want you to never forget that the church is in our heart and we want to reach out and we want to worship together. We want to study together. We want to be the church that we've talked about for so many years now. We've talked about how the church is in our heart. And now uh, we have this opportunity to prove that we have learned something over the years. So God bless you as you practice being the church. Let me remind you that uh, you can drop your offerings off on Sunday morning, we will have the same format we had this past Sunday from about 10 o'clock to about 12.30. We will be here at church. I will go live at about 11 o'clock. Uh, we will have a message given at uh, uh, about 11 o'clock. We'll go live with a morning message. And then from uh, that point, we will hang around for a minute to allow you to come in. If you'd like to come in and just pray or drop your offerings off, uh, you can do that. Or you can mail your offerings to P.O. Box 9, uh, Allenhurst, Georgia, 31301, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get those. This is a very changing situation still. Uh, just today, uh, we, we heard the governor saying, uh, emphasizing again how important it is that, that we maintain our social uh, distances. And I want to uh, change that just a little bit and tell you, we want to change, we want to maintain our physical distance, but I certainly want you to uh, be socially engaged, whether it's on the telephone or whether it's on various social media platforms, be socially engaged. Um, you'll notice tonight as we sit here uh, for our Bible study, uh, the Harper's on that side and <laughs> the Scott's on this side, and we're 
practicing, practicing our physical dif uh, distances, and we just want to uh, try to follow the guidelines. We want to model that for you, and we want you to follow those social guidelines also. Uh, as hard as it may be, uh, let's refrain from the handshakes and the hugs and the, and the touches uh, until uh, we get this pandemic uh, under control, or more under control. God bless you, my friends. Tonight, uh, we're going to uh, talk about this new beginning idea, and we're going to uh, just jump right into our discussion. If you have your Bibles open, uh, of course, we've talked about, you've heard great already, uh, for, uh, 2 Corinthians five. chapter 5, Six. you've heard that already, and now we want, I want to just focus your attention, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 43, and I would that you read that entire chapter sometime, but I just want to uh, begin and then uh, Assistant Pastor Harper is going to lead us or facilitate a discussion of Isaiah chapter 43 as it pertains to uh, this new beginning. Our Bible study tonight is titled, New Beginnings Requires Encouragement. And if we're going to be who, who we are to be through this, through this pandemic, I declare to you we need some encouragement. And I believe that Isaiah chapter 43 offers that encouragement. Verse 2 in particular, and then I'll pass it off to uh, Reverend Harper, says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers they shall I will flow thee. And when you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And with that, I'm going to ask uh, the Ron View uh, continue facilitating this discussion. All right. Um, so we're going to um, do Bible studies that's a little bit different. We're going to um, kind of have this little roundtable discussion. Um, one, uh, so as Pastor said, so that we can be an encouragement to um, all those who have listening, especially to the, the pandemic that we're actually going through. But also we wanted to um, uh, speak to um, the, the young people, the young at heart, and even the elder generation um, to how we can all be an encouragement to one another. Um, and you know, you just heard that uh, that particular text just as read, um, when we pass it through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Um, and as we think about this, uh, especially with what we're dealing with that, um, how does that encourage you too individually? We go with Sister Scott. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I just think sometimes we go through challenging things in our lives. And uh, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Sometimes it's just a water, shallow water. Sometimes we go through harder times where it's like a river. And it says, it won't overflow thee. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to walk through the fire where we have to go through some really hard and struggling times. And uh, we really have to get to know God and know what God is uh, what God can do for us, for us and believe in his promises that he has given us. And I think we all go through those different seasons in our life where we need to get to know, really know God, and that gives us our testimony right. for the future. Right. And I think also, um, as she reiterated, we talked about going through the water or going through the river, not drowning, going through the fire, but not being burned. So sometimes you just have to know you're gonna go through a difficult season, so to speak, in your life. Um, but it's a process. And so although it is difficult, it's uncomfortable, you may feel like you're being burned because you're walking through the fire, but the word says you will not be burned. And so we just have to remember that it's still a process. And so um, although you may feel like you're burning, you will not be consumed with the fire. You won't be burned. Right. And, um, you know, and, you know, so it's still keeping in that, that same context with that particular text. Um, now let's uh, make this uh, make sense to the generations that are now and that is going to come. Um, and as we talk about new beginnings, how does this speak to the fears of the next generation? When you think about that verse um, and all the words that we just used and have we summarized it here in just a moment, um, how does this verse uh, speak to the fears of the next generation as well as our older generation? We'll go with Pastor Scott. Well, when I look at passing through the waters uh, uh, and God's promise to us is that we will not be overtaken. It speaks to my generation, those in front of me, 
by telling us that we we, we can trust God. Amen. Regardless of the situation of this pandemic, or whatever we're facing, this verse says it will not overtake us. And I'm excited about that, that from, an, from an, our generational point of view, we can say we've been through some stuff and we've seen what God has done for us. For a younger generation's point of view, it says to us, uh, when I look at the older generation, I see they made it through. I'm encouraged that I can make it today. When I think about you all and your age group and all that God has in store for you, uh, I realize that we've seen more. Uh, we've got more days behind us than we got in front of us. Your days are in front of you. And so uh, this scripture should speak to you, I believe, to say to you that uh, even though it looks bad right now, hmm. we're going to get through this. Amen. And we're going to come out better than we went in. Right. Maybe that's what the verse is saying. What, yeah. I think that's where we are. I think I think that's where we are also, and um, and Pastor Scott brings up a good moment, uh, when we, uh, a point as when uh, we think about the elder generation, um, the things that they've seen, um, but then when you think about the the millennial generation, if you will, um, generation Y and Z, you know, now that we're in there, um, they've seen some things too, um, and you know, so. Um, how can we encourage the generation that have seen not only this pandemic, but also went through the, the couple killings of um, um, black and brown boys by the police and seeing things like that? Um, how, how can they be encouraged even through this moment and through this text? I think, you know, personally to keep going. Um, I think our generation, me and my sister, we, we, we have coined a phase that's called weaker and but wiser. We are weaker in the sense of we haven't sat in a segregated school. We don't know what that feels like, so to speak. We, we have the testimonies of our aunties and uncles and grandparents, maybe even parents, but we haven't personally gone through that. So weaker in the sense of not having gone through those exact particular situations, but wiser in the sense of we have those testimonies to help make us stronger and to grow and to mature. So I think ultimately not giving up when things don't go the way we want them to go. When we look around and we see um dysfunction or we see the world the way that it is realizing and remembering where well, grandmama made it through and she didn't give up so i gotta have that same tenacity and t charge to keep going to not give up to not let my surroundings overtake me and i would like to say that uh you know as older people we have to respect some of the challenges that our younger people are going through mm -hmm. they go through a lot different challenges than me and my husband went through at our age you know, we might, might have saw a, a little argument or a fight, but it didn't lead to anybody right. being killed right. or uh, so shot or stabbed or anything like that. So, but today's generation, they have to deal with the social media, mm -hmm. cyberbullying. You know, they have to. They have a lot more challenge, a lot different challenges than I think the older generation. But we have to respect what they're going through because it might be a little different than what we yeah, went through because it's a new world. Yeah. It's a new world. I, I think th this text really says to us, when you pass through the water, and I think being the, be, be, the, the preacher in me comes out to say that the waters could be anything. Mm -hmm. And my wife's right. correct that, that, that the waters of my generation may be totally different than the waters of your generation, mm -hmm. a subsequent generation. But remember the promise. He says, I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. Whatever your waters are, whatever you're dealing with today, he says, I'll be with you. To me, that's reassuring that, that, that whatever waters are, they are, they won't overflow you. Great. And that leads us to our next point, because I think one of the things that um, maybe um, uh, me, me and you talked a little bit, Pastor Scott, and, you know, um, it, it's different coming to a church that's empty, you know, and, um, and not having the people here that you normally fellowship with. And, um, and so my next question is this, why is it important to have uh, why is the church important in in a moment like this? Why is the church important in a moment like this? Was that for me? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, "Upon this rock I'll build my church," and I believe that when he when he when he said that, he was looking toward two thousand and ten. Because because notice notice he talks to a group of folk who really didn't understand what the church was. They understood the assembling together 
uh, the congregational assembling uh, from the uh, from the Ark of the Covenant forward and, and from the wilderness forward. They understood that assembling, but then Jesus used a different term uh, that will, 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 he said, now upon this rock I'll build my church. Hmm. And I believe that the church then is our sanctuary. It's important to have a place of shelter that we can come to. I believe that the church also offers us stability. Mm -hmm. That is a place where we can find some level, some, some solid ground to stand on. But in this day and age, let me just throw this one in. Mm -hmm. It is also a, san a sanitizer. The church is offers a sanitation for the mind, for the spirit, mm -hmm. and for the soul. Mm -hmm. We're worried about washing our hands and getting our body clean. Yeah, but the church mm -hmm. it is important because the church sanitizes our heart and our mind and our soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, regardless of what this virus does, I want my mind, my heart, and my soul sanitized. Mm. So I need the church to Amen. sanitize my mind. And I need to just throw this out now, because somebody will say, yeah, that's the point. That's why we ought to be having church. And all, everybody ought to be coming to the building. Well, I, I, did, I did not say that. Mm -hmm. What I that's said right. was the church, the church is a sanitizer. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, while we, uh, analogies came to my mind, I want to share this with you. We, um, we, the best thing to use, my wife will tell you, the best thing to use is soap and water to mm. clean germs. That's the best thing. Yeah. But when soap and water is not available, mm -hmm. they also tell us the hand sanitizer will do the job, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And so listen, the best thing would be for us to assemble together <laughs> inside these four walls and have a so. worship experience. That's the soap and water. Mm -hmm. right. But, but now listen. Sanitizer. <laughs> We're living in a time where we got to be mobile and portable. Right. Yeah, so. Right. so now we can use some sanitizer. Mm -hmm. The sanitizer is what we're doing right now. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we go out to reach out to you on various social medias. Amen. So I want to throw this point in there um, and it'll, it'll wrap us in and get us to go into the um, into a direction um, and the rest lets me go. And you and you two can key in on the why the church is important also. But this other caveat I want to put in there uh, when we think about the um, new means of having church, if you will, uh, why are young people? Why is it important to have young people involved in the church? Well, they're the future seed. Uh, you got to have a seat that's going to take your place when you're not there. Right. So it's important for us to uh, allow our, our children to be a part of the service, for us to mentor them. And once we have mentored them, when we get older, we need to move out the way <laughs> so they can slide in. If God has given them the ability to do whatever task that they uh, are equipped to do. But I think, uh, you know, they're our future, mm -hmm. and they're very important because they're the future seat. Amen. I mean, pretty much everything so Scott just said, so they don't die. The church doesn't die. That's um, right. Because at some point, your physical body is going to be put in the ground, and somebody else's physical body is going to have to come in and do the work. Um, so we have to make sure that we have young folk involved so that the church doesn't die, but also so that they can be mentored, they can be trained, they can be taught how to do certain things. Um, yes, they may have a certain skill set. Uh, Deron, you good with technology and all this stuff. That may be your skill set, but you also need some mentoring from Pastor Scott to say, hey, this is how it works or how it fits into Bacon's dynamic, so to speak. Um, and then also, so they'll take ownership of the church and buy into what we're doing, uh, our ministries, our community presence that we have. Um, most of the time, you don't buy into something unless you're going regularly, you feel like you're involved, you feel like you're a part of it. And so a lot of times, you know, you need that. They need to be involved so that they can buy into it so when they go away to college and they come back home, they know that, oh, I can fit here. I, I have I have a tie, an emotional tie mm -hmm. to this place. And I think good leadership always mentors someone to mm -hmm. take their place. It shouldn't be that when you're not there, it falls apart. And you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of glad it's that way. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to have somebody to, that's able to step in, to take your place. Right. That's good leadership. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. I think uh, as we think about, and that still is in line with the text, because maybe um, God is also saying, you know, when we, uh, the new beginning, um, the reason why we've always been able to overcome, especially as a church, because we always inspire people to come in behind us. Um, and, and that's, that's I think that's what the, the vision of the church, and um, that's the, the, the love that I have for the church. Um, uh, our next set of verses uh, has this here. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, ye. I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. 
Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled who among them can de can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth the, their witness that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Uh, the verses indicate uh, seem to indicate that there is something for us all to do. Um, what can leaders do to help prepare their self and the body uh, for the young people to take part in every aspect of the church? I, I, what what uh, uh, Sister Scott just said is very, very important. I think we, we need to develop ourselves, look around and see uh, how is it that we can incorporate or bring children along. After all, I, I remember for me personally, uh, I, cre I had a uh, got a love for the church because somebody brought me to church. Mm -hmm. I, I got a love for, for doing things in the church because there was someone in the church who inspired me or asked me to do the thing, whatever it was I was doing. Uh, the first time I prayed publicly in the church was because someone asked me to do it. Mm -hmm. The first time I taught a Sunday school lesson in the church was because somebody asked me to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't do a very good job of teaching. I remember that day very well. Mm -hmm. I taught Sunday school, but uh, uh, Deacon Pittman uh, actually was a teacher. I just stood in front. Mm -hmm. and, but, but I remember that day very well. I stood there but he, and he taught the lesson. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we just mm -hmm. got to uh, make an effort to allow people to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so, so that uh, we got we, we got to prepare, prepare, prepare those folks behind us to come on and, and help us out. And then while they're going through the development uh, phase, we have to be willing to be patient. Mm -hmm. Show them what to do, how to do it, where they make a mistake. Right. Right. You know, we have to be patient. And they might not do it perfectly, mm -hmm. but that's part of the process of learning. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely having a contingency plan. Um, just because you have a contingency plan doesn't mean that you're definitely going to use it. We, we have our... Uh, hurricane things that we do in preparation for a hurricane but just because we have that plan doesn't necessarily mean we'll use it in the event the hurricane shifts well we don't have to evacuate so that you know puts the end to that plan so with the training and mentoring and teaching them you know they may not fully step into that role completely for another year or so um, but at least it's preparing them so when it's time to implement the plan of them stepping forward they'll be prepared um, definitely right. And then, of course, this next question is, um, Melanie, you can start with, um, because now, uh, and, and it, uh, I'm just state the question, you know, how should young people prepare themselves um, to be ready um, to take those places, if you will? Um, uh, because there are some, uh, if we were to be honest, there's some things that we could look at uh, young people and we say, well, they're not quite ready yet. And, you know, and um, it, may, it may not be like a quality issue or things like that. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes um, we as young people might shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, so how should we pre uh, prepare ourselves um, to be ready to take a uh, part in uh, those aspects of the churches? I think first and foremost, be present um, because pastor Amen. can't Amen. think of somebody to shadow or elevate to another position if you're not present. If you're not present, you're not going to cross his mind because you're not present. They don't see you. Those deacons don't see you. They don't see you not only a coming, but actively co participating when you do come. Um, it's just like your job. If you are, are never on time, you're always late, you don't do your assigned duties as you were instructed, and then you go to your boss and say, hey, I want a promotion, that doesn't really quite, that's not how it goes. You got to be present, and not only do you have to be present, you actually got to be actively engaged and trying to do something or participate. Um, so I think my piece of advice or my thought process on it would be to definitely be present and then, you know, don't get so stuck on your high horse of, oh, well, they didn't let me pray. They didn't let me sing my song. Sometimes you got to get your, 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 your elbows dirty. You got you to gotta do a little working before somebody gives you a title or a position. Um, it's just like with our jobs. We kill ourselves for our jobs and we try our best to, you know, do do well for our jobs. Why don't we do the same in church? So be present and then get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to work and do some things. And be willing to learn. Be right. right. Be willing. And then sometimes uh, that person might give you advice to tell you how to do it a different way. Mm. Well, don't get an attitude. Right. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, have a good attitude about learning and be willing to learn, be willing to, uh, you know, be given advice to and have your mind open and be present. And, and show good 
qualities mm -hmm. of uh, work ethic right. qualities. Um, and you know, cause uh, like I said, sometimes, um, uh, we, we had young people, uh, because we got all this technology and I could Google anything. Um, but then when you come into churches, sometimes you try to put it into practice, um, because of the area, the environment that you're in sometimes just always doesn't fit. So, um, you should always be around those elders because they're willing, um, the, um, especially here at Baketon. One thing I can say here for Baketon is, uh, we have some great leaders that are willing to teach if you just follow along behind them, um, and, um, and use our ideas to help prepare the church. Um, but, uh, I'm gonna let Melanie. Uh, sometimes you hear, and this is not necessarily particular to Baconton, but just overall when you look at millennials and their absence from the church, um, sometimes they reference church hurt. Oh, I got hurt, you know, such and such hurt my feelings, and I ain't been at the church then, since then. You know, and that may, they, they shouldn't have. Maybe they should have watched how they said it. Maybe it was the presentation of all of it. Maybe it wasn't what they said, but how they said it. You know, I, I get that, but at some point, you got to work past the hurt, you know, so come to Bible study so you can get your soul healed. Come to church so you can be taught. Um, get past that so that you can move forward because that's only going, that's just a trick of, the, of, of Satan. He's using that hurt that you experienced to keep you from walking in your full potential because the scripture already told us we're going to go through the fire, but we're not going to be burned. So you, you got to push past whatever church hurt you may be feeling so that you can move forward. For every person that maybe doesn't like you, I'm certain there's somebody at that church that is rooting for you that got your back. Amen. That wants Amen. to see you do well and wants your soul to prosper. Amen. And then we we get hurt on our jobs, but we don't we quit our going jobs. To that job. you <laughs> sure we got to right. pay the rent every yeah, month. You mm -hmm. So you know, we just gotta, you know, sometimes toughen up. But there, you know, there is such thing as church hurt. Mm -hmm. Definitely such thing as church hurt. And uh, we do have to maybe listen to that, be willing to listen to mm -hmm. what they've been through. And, um, you know, we have to be open to that. Listen, and don't just dismiss it. Right. Mm. Don't dismiss right. it. Right. And Pastor, um, I, and I want you to um, um, kind of end before we go into the next uh, question is, um, cause we, you know, cause that is a good point of the church hurt and um, listening and that people have been hurt. Pastor, your first sermon of this Monday New Beginning was on reconciliation. Um, so I, I know you got something to say <laughs> <laughs> about that subject matter. Well, um, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. And then the next verse talks about the fact that God has given us not only the ministry of reconciliation, but the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And so it's important now that we're going to be uh, what God would have us to be. We're going to go through the fire and, and, and survive the fire, survive all the tests, whatever they are that come by our way. Then we've got to be willing to allow God to help us reconcile ourselves to ourselves, mm -hmm. ourselves to God, and ourselves to our fellow man. That was my, for the first Sunday, you're right, that's what I talked about. Mm -hmm. And so we got to see, uh, how can we allow the Holy Spirit of God to do this? And I believe, I believe that, and I want to jump ahead of you just mm -hmm. a little bit, I believe that the next verse, verse, verse 19, uh, well, if you look down at verse 19, it says that God said, I'm going to show you a new thing, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a new thing. Now this shall spring forth, and you shall not know it. Now I want to just kind of play with that just a little bit tonight. Mm -hmm. God's going to show us a new thing, and maybe this new thing is uh, 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 this coronavirus, <laughs> COVID-19. Mm -hmm. God sh shows us a new thing, but listen, it will spring forth, you will not know it. But listen at the, at the end of that, the, the part, the next part of the verse says, and I will even make a way in the wilderness mm -hmm. and rivers in the desert. Now, what this says to me is, God's going to do something new, but as he does it new, he's going to make a river in the desert, mm. a way in the wilderness. Mm. What he really says to us, this verse really says, speaks to us, if we allow him to, in spite of the hurt, mm. in spite of the whatever it is that you've used to, to put you in the place that you're in, in spite of that, if you allow God to, he will make a way in the wilderness. Mm. I don't know what the time looks like, but now but let me just talk to him. Just to, give me about uh, <laughs> a way. In the, if you look at a wilderness, it is a dense mm -hmm. forest. It, uh, not not like the the forest where you have the trees planted in rows mm -hmm. and, and and you can walk down the row and then right. not like that. But mm -hmm. it's dense. Mm -hmm. Wilderness is dense, and in the wilderness there are wild beasts. There are everything is just bad in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. 
But he says, and if you ever uh, went on this, that you had a there's no way to go. Mm -hmm. But God says, I'll make a way in the wilderness. Could it be that God is saying to us that in spite of all the confusion in your life, all of the stuff that's going on in your life, could it be that God's saying, if you allow me to, mm -hmm. I'll bring you through that. Mm -hmm. I'll make a way through that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you'll see. And then he says, I'll put rivers in the desert, mm -hmm. in a dry place, where the end, you're dry, you're dried up, you just feel like you're lost without any hope. Could it be that God's saying, I'm going to give you a, a, some water in those dry places? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what the old folk meant when they said he's water. <laughs> in dry places, yeah. bread when I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't know. But, but I, I do know this, that he says clearly, I will do a new thing. A new thing. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to show you something you hadn't seen before. Right. Mm. Yeah. And Pastor, you know, I was looking at that verse and I, I seen um, the, the way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Um, and, and to our mind, that can't happen. That, that oh that at least it shouldn't happen mm -hmm. and only um, a powerful God and all uh, all powerful God can do those things the um, the extraordinary things uh, that cause something new to happen um, and we, we kind of alluded to our, already but you know if we think about it how does that really speak to us today um, yes we are in uh, uh, COVID-19 but can you imagine if this thing would have happened 10 years ago and we didn't have Wi-Fi and um, and it was this past Sunday. Uh, but one of the things that uh, watching the uh, the panel discussion between the pastors uh, this past Sunday, one of the pastors mentioned one of the things that they did, and as we talk about branch of generation, that they did was actually go back, and it almost go wraps right right back around to how you started the Bible study lesson, Pastor. Is um, um, he said that they started calling people, you know, going back over the calling tree, you know, so. Sometimes the new thing could be a thing that we already done, but we just forgot about. We need to revisit. And we just need to revisit those things. So, Pastor, um, so yet we can use people, we can utilize young people, the new things, um, and this new technology. Um, but in, how, how do we still encourage those that that ain't getting online? I thought about that today as I talked to uh, an older member of our church. I talk, and I, I mentioned the various platforms we were using. And then I said, well, we've got to figure out a way for you to get some word uh, from us uh, during the week. And I don't have the answer to that yet, but what I do know is this. Uh, it may simply be that our deacons, myself, and our preachers are going to call and personally talk to that person. Mm -hmm. That's one way of doing it. You're right. Sometimes we go back to and pick up uh, uh, what the old way, mm. and it feels brand new. Mm. Uh, real quick, real, real quick story. Uh, I was telling my wife last night that I can remember uh, Big Mama making a tomato pie. Mm. Now that's foreign to a lot of people. Even that south, it's not foreign to you. But the only person I can remember making the tomato pie was Big Mama. Mama didn't make it, and uh, none of my other hand, I don't remember anybody making that but Big Mom. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an old thing. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I have a taste just a taste for a <laughs> tomato pie. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and get the old stuff sometimes, and when you get it, it tastes brand new. Now, when I shared the tomato pie, and I did that a few some some years ago, I made a tomato pie, and it seemed brand new mm -hmm. to my to my wife and to my children. Mm -hmm that we haven't made a pie. <laughs> but to me, it was old. Yeah. And so sometimes that old technology that we have mm -hmm. will come to the forefront mm -hmm. and it'll seem sweet and new and fresh because we're using it in a fresh new way. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to just, just uh, throw out another uh, uh, saying that uh, the old folk had was that uh, uh, don't forget the bridge that brought you over. Mm -hmm. And so, so we can't forget the old telephone. Mm -hmm. when we, before we had Instagram and, and before we had YouTube and before we had uh, Messenger and all those things, we had the old dial-up telephone. Mm -hmm. So we cannot forget the bridge that brought us over. And so reach back and get that telephone, call somebody and tell them and encourage them along the way. It, what we need more than anything else right now is an encouraging word. And whether it comes from the preacher 
the deacon, uh, from the member, we need an encouraging word today. This encouraging word is, the Lord's going to do a new thing, mm -hmm. and he's going to make a way in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He'll make rivers in the desert. God doing something special uh, tonight. As we study this word tonight, God is doing something really special. And I think also uh, a simple card, mm -hmm. you know, that card can come right at the right time for that person mm -hmm. where it makes a difference for them. Or, you know, maybe we could uh, send them a copy of our lesson, mm -hmm. the ones that don't have any technology. Mm -hmm. You know, the old-fashioned envelope mm -hmm. and stamp. Right, right. <laughs> stamp an envelope and do it. <laughs> I'm amazed at, at the number of times uh, God knows exactly what you're going to be dealing with on Tuesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. He knew that on uh, on last Friday when he moved on your heart mm -hmm. to put a card in the mail. <clears throat> he knew that that person that you send that card to would get it on Tuesday and they'll be dealing with something. God's like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he can take that simple card and make it a brand new way of encouraging, mm -hmm. of encouragement. And so, yes, God will do a new thing. He'll speak encouragement to your heart tonight. I believe that. Amen. All right. So um, as we uh, end our time together, we got this one more final thing, um, and uh, especially in a time like that. And it kind of leads to this point of what Pascal was saying. Um, what we need now is really just a word of encouragement. Um, so we're just going to go around and I just want you to y'all all look into the camera there um, and just speak an encouragement word to those who might be listening um, to us this evening. Well, I'd like to encourage people to, to trust God. You know, God has our attention with this virus. Uh, we can't watch sports. We can't go out to the restaurant. We can't go on vacation. <laughs> so now we can spend some time with God. Seek God. Mm -hmm. Seek his word. Pray more. And uh, spend more time with our family, mm -hmm. our kids and grandkids as much as we can. And I just think it's a time that we need to, you know, really focus on God. And he's got our total attention right now. And be praying for our nation and for our family. I think ultimately just don't give up. You know, it's not going to be this way forever. You know, so as you trust God, know that, okay, minute by minute, day by day, just trust God because the situation that you're facing is it's not going to be forever. So don't give up. Just trust God and take it one day at a time, sometimes minute by minute. Amen. And I'm going to say something, then I'm going um, to turn it over to Pastor Scott, and then he's going to close us out. And the encouragement word that I would like to give to you, just know that, um, yes, God is definitely in control, um, but you also have control over some things and, you know, how you uh, carry yourself. And sometimes just go, if you can, you know, use wisdom, um, as we talked about social distancing and whatnot. But sometimes I just need to go see my uh, immediate family here in um, Allenhurst and just make sure and put eyes on them, you know. So um, do that with wisdom. Don't go see everybody. <laughs> um, however... Um, you know, so just, uh, and, and if your wisdom says, no, not today, I can't do that. Um, uh, like me, I may not be able to, um, wisdom might tell me, no, don't go see your grandma today. Um, use wisdom and give them a call, um, and use something. And, um, as we were talking, uh, earlier, I thought about, um, the letter also send out a letter of encouragement, say, Hey, I love you. And, um, and some other things and maybe a Bible verse and just sending out the, um, the, the mailing stamps, they're still working and the uh, mailman is still carrying. So however you want to give an encouragement word, just know that um, there are some things that you're in control of too, and that's actually loving people. Mm -hmm. Pastor Scott? Again, thank you, Bacon, for joining in with us tonight and being a part of this uh, new thing that God is doing. Uh, I want to encourage you to visit one another. That visit may not be knocking on the door at someone's house, but we can visit through the various social medias that we have, pick up the phone and call somebody. I was amazed that as I made some phone calls on yesterday, the number of folk who were simply encouraged by the fact that I just took time to call. So would you call somebody and be a part of that? Call somebody. Let this Bible study be an input, uh, a catalyst for you to reach out to somebody and call them. You might be feeling really down now and really just uh, almost stir crazy. 
<laughs> a lot of stuff's going on. And we're locked into a small area. We can't, do, can't go do the stuff we are accustomed to doing. And, and if you're like many folk, after being around and hearing so much of this stuff about COVID-19, you began to develop some symptoms, even if you don't have them. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally, you began to think, <clears throat> like uh, tonight, my, I kept uh, drinking water. I'm thinking, well, what, what, why, why, my, why my throat feel like that? <laughs> uh, well, I'm talking. That's one reason why my throat feels like that. Well, but, but if you're not careful, you begin to develop those things just, uh, psychosomatically. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you to not let the devil play with your mind. Now, church, I'll tell you this. And I'm being transparent to tell you that not only the devil will play with your mind, he plays with my mind. And so I, knowing that, I want to tell you uh, to be encouraged and know you're not alone in feeling that way. Mm. You're not alone in feeling confused and even angry at times. And, and I, want to I want to encourage you to do this for me. As you're there with your family, spending all this family time together, you're going to get on one another's nerves. <laughs> My wife said amen real quick. <laughs> You're going to get on one another's nerves. I want to ask and plead with you to be patient with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe it was my, my, my son said this, and I don't know where he got, got it from, but maybe, uh, but somewhere along the line, he picked this up. If you're not, if your children are not getting on your nerves, mm -hmm. you're probably not spending enough time with them. <laughs> And so maybe, I mean, let me just push that forward and tell you mm -hmm. that if your family is not getting on your nerve, maybe you're not spending enough time with it. Right. <laughs> and so this is the time we're going to spend a lot more time. So I want to encourage you to be patient with one another. Finally tonight, uh, as we end this time of Bible study, I want to draw your attention to all to the word we just discussed. But if you have your Bibles and you have your devices, uh, turn to Psalms 27. I want to end with this, with this verse. Psalms 27. And verse number five, Psalms 27 and verse five, says this. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me up upon a rock. But read the rest of that, and you'll, you'll get an idea of why, that's so, why that verse is so important. David simply says, I'm not going to fear for in the time of trouble, God will hide me. I have to honestly admit that I don't know what tomorrow will hold. I don't know how you will fare through this situation. But the one thing I do know, and I, I encourage you to hear me, I'm trying to look into the camera and make sure I'm looking straight at the camera to tell you this, that in the time of trouble, Amen. God will God will, God will hide us, yes, he and he will be our sustainer in the time of trouble. So God bless you, Bakerton. Share this with somebody. Be encouraged tonight, and know that this too shall pass. God's going to get us through this. And I do need to say, you know, preacher got at least three clothes. So <laughs> I just remember, I do need to say this to you. There are some folk in our community who perhaps will say to you, uh, your church ought to have been open. There are some folk who will say to you that we got faith in our church and we, we, we ain't letting the devil uh, scare us from going to church. I want to say again, as I said the first night I did this thing, one of these, your decision to open church or to close church is not indicative of your faith in God. It simply means you came to a different decision. So, Bacon, don't allow anybody to tell you that your church should have been open. You tell them, your pastor said, <laughs> Amen. your pastor said mm -hmm. that he heard from God. Amen. And for Bacon, we ain't talking about for nobody else. But for Bacon and Missionary Baptist Church, we will be closed uh, last Sunday. We were closed last Sunday. We will we'll be closed this Sunday. And we will make a decision 
on the following week, but it looks like we will be closed at least through the first Sunday. Just tell them that's what your pastor said, and you're going to be a good sheep, and you're going to follow your shepherd. Amen. As your shepherd follows Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great evening.